everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial or I can say the last tutorial of ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. Today we are talking about the sample questions on chapter 8 as we completed the chapter 8 yesterday. We are having the last tutorial on this chapter to understand the sample questions. In examination we'll be having three questions from this chapter so prepare effectively according to the pattern here. Looking at the first question here, we have been reviewing the test cases in your test and have discovered that there is a wide variety of methods the TAEs, that is test automation engineers, have used to handle system errors. How should you handle this? In turn, in this particular question, they are trying to ask you what are the best practices to address such queries in the real time. So as you see, the very first thing is A, establish an error recovery process in the task and ensure all test cases are using that process. I think this sounds a little more interesting with respect to the recovery scenarios within the task process to handle the uh, different uh, wide range of uh, methods which are being used with respect to the error handling methods. So it's not recommended that you use different methods for the same job. You must have a standard guideline defined for one particular activity. Let's look at still the other options here. B, create a library of recovery process. So there is a better reuse between the different script. I think library comes with the concept of reusability and creating the recovery process as uh, uh, libraries would be really helpful, but this is not the exact solution as part of the best practice. It will be only duplicating the work. C, move to a keyword driven approach and make sure Recovery is one of the keyword. I think that's again going to create additional efforts required to do the same job, but uh, not the straightforward thing. So keyword driven would only help you if you want to pick up one of the tests when required. Provide better wait time uh, handling in the scripts to avoid the system errors. I think uh, the scenario never speaks about uh, the issue of wait time. So this is not a most relevant option to be used as a part of this question to be answered. So here the right answer is a. Establish an error recovery process in the task and ensure all test cases are using that process. Question number two. Up until now, you have provided automated testing for a stable SUT. Because of changing business demands, the SUT will be updated to include several new features and plugins that communicate via APIs. In what way should you update the tasks? Now again, this is with respect to considering various components and one of the components we learned is about how APIs come into picture with the improvising the automation solutions. So uh, how should we update this is what the question is. So let's look into uh, the options here. Improve task recovery to make it more fault tolerant and API calls fails. Um, if you look at this option, it do not directly enhance the API testing capabilities of the task. It generally assists with, uh, of course, uh, having some kind of support on the API calls, uh, which are failures or such improvements on the recovery part if runtime error happened, but this not generally, uh, mainly helps you to update your tasks. Update the documentation for the task, including its support for APIs. So documentation support would be helpful, but uh, not going to increase the capabilities of the task. So it will only help you to have a better understanding with respect to APIs, how they are being used and so, but not the task improvement. C, improve the logging to capture the anticipated increase in defects due to API failures. I think this is more on the side of defect management and quality aspects to be measured in terms of monitoring for advanced activities if in case any required. So C is also not going to help you update your automation solution. D, modify the adaptation layer in the TAA to enable the tasks to test via the APIs. I think when you talk about the architecture improvements, you talk about the environment improvements and something like that, which actually is one of the major component of tasks is one thing which will help you to improvise or update your tasks. So D is the most relevant option here so far, what we have compared with A, B, C. So the final answer here and the right answer is D, modify the adaptation layer in the TAA to enable the tasks to test via the APIs. And last question of this particular session.
and this particular certification. You have been conducting a quality review for your TAS. You have discovered that it has not been updated for three years. It's been three years now. The TAS functions properly and provides good coverage of the SUD. However, you want to ensure that it is working as essentially as possible, as efficiently as possible. What step should you consider in order to increase efficiency of the test? Again, we are talking about increasing the efficiency of the test, so please clearly look at your options. It could be quite tricky. A. Ensure consistent naming standard for new automation code. I think uh, it's actually a good practice, but new automation code is not being written as of now in the scenario. We're talking about updating the existing one because it's not been updated for three years. So A is ruled out. B. Make changes to the tasks in rapid successions to keep pace with leading edge practices. Uh, <clears throat> speed of change uh, to the task is risky. Uh, so there is no indication that leading edge practices will be more efficient. So it's not included as a part of the scenario. So can be a good thing, but not as per the scenario given to you because we have a scenario here. C, ensure the latest libraries are incorporated into the task. Yes, I think that's the most th important thing which we can talk about when the uh, uh, discovery issues and other things have not been updated for many years. So make sure that what libraries you have created has been imported and incorporated to the tasks or not. But look at D. Enlist a third party vendor to evaluate current tasks. I think that will be an additional cost. It might help identify the inconsistencies as it is not cost effective. So. That's a, not a good solution when compared to C. So you have to make such choices in the examination as well. So the right answer here is C. Ensure the latest libraries are incorporated into the tasks. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. And that's all from this particular session on the test automation engineer certification. I wish you all the very best to prepare well for your examination and pass the examination. Generally, the examination will be of similar pattern where you will be having 40 questions to be answered. And uh, the typical way of asking remains the same, like that is a tricky way which they will put it to you. Each corner of the segment is really important. Make sure that you have been through all the tutorials of this session to understand each topic broken into simple parts to understand the detail of each and every aspect, which will help you prepare efficiently for your examination. So at the end, wishing you all the very best for the examination and hoping that you pass the examination and return back for the next certification on this channel. At the end, of course, the same thing. That should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always here to address your query and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.